Hi, welcome back to Making Sense Conversations and thank you for joining me again on the Diary of a Mad African Entrepreneur. I'm Washa Kendwati. Now, visionary is a job. I was just having a conversation uh, about an hour ago with a friend of mine and it was about succession. As I've talked, I've told you before, I've gone through succession Centonomy does run pretty much without me, at least operationally. I have a management team. I have a fantastic team. I have a CEO. And that has been an experience in itself. And that's the context of our conversation. Because she asked me, so what do you do? And that's when I told her, and I've said this, and I've been in forums where we've talked about this with other entrepreneurs, where visionary is a job. So. Yes, the business runs, but I'm still the visionary and and that comes with a job. And the tricky thing about visionary is that that job doesn't look like other jobs, but it is still a job and it still takes effort to do. And I think, you know, there are visionaries of all kinds, especially in this business journey. There are those like me who have transitioned out of day-to-day operations And there are those that are still involved, but still play the role of visionary. And there are others who, it may not even be their business, but they find themselves being visionaries. And I just want to tell you, this is what I've discovered. It is a job. So having an idea is not just an idea. It doesn't leave you. Once you have an idea that you're convicted about and you happen to be passionate about it, it doesn't leave you. And especially in the beginning, and the thing is ideas don't stop. We have that original seed. And my original seed was let me teach people how to handle their money because I was also going through my own financial mess. That was the seed. But the idea evolved and keeps evolving. So you as the visionary keep carrying this idea that never stops. I think I said last in one of the other episodes that having a vision is very irritating because it doesn't stop. So it evolves and you start seeing possibility. And once you've seen the possibility, it is so hard to let it go. So it starts dictating how you see things. It starts dictating where you want to be. It starts dictating who you want to be talking to. It starts dictating who it is that you hire. And being a visionary, I remember I hired people who will work independently. And there was no formula. There's no HR professional who could have told me this is how to look for that. But instinctively, when I'm in an interview, I'm not just looking at the usual things. My antenna is up so that my instinct can tune into that thing that you have that I know you will work independently because part of my vision was really this business must work without me. So I was instinctively looking for that. And at some point I realized I needed to be there to hire people, not anymore. We got some good people in, but I didn't follow that instinct. So that having that instinct is energy. It takes energy and it is what a visionary does. Seeing whether it's the next step or 10 steps ahead, whether it's three months ahead or three years ahead, in the business world, they like calling it the strategy. Having, carrying that is work. And when you have it, you're constantly trying to make people align to it. So even me, people can run the business, but there's a way you see the possibility of the idea unfolding and you still are the one who champions it and who carries people across. And sometimes you have to stand up for your vision even if you're alone and that takes a lot of work. You're giving, you're not micromanaging, but you're giving some sort of direction at the same time knowing when to put your foot on the accelerator and when to put your foot on the bricks when to completely let go and let others run with it and when to actually step in and evaluating your mistakes over and over and over. Because vision is about sight and sight needs light, your 
subconsciously or consciously always looking for places where you can get light. And I think that's why entrepreneurs like forums and hanging out with each other and talking to each other. Not only do, do we have similar challenges, so we feel at home doing it, but somebody has gone through what you've gone through and they can give you light. And that's why we like learning because we're always looking for light because we sit in this place of it's fantastic. It is fantastic, but very annoying at the same time where what the possibility you see and where you always are in the moment is just in two different worlds. And you're always trying to bridge the gap and somehow the gap never gets filled because then you've seen the next thing which brings uh, the same gap all over again. Yeah, quite an interesting journey that we chose. And I don't know about you, but I found myself, I find myself till today and even before as you're trying even to explain to people how to make things work, there's a, have you ever noticed there's a why you can't explain? You can't explain why you did what you did. Why did you hire a certain person? Can't explain. Why wasn't this client a fit? Can't explain. Why did you say no? Can't explain. Why did you say yes? Can't explain. Why did you do this? How did you come up with this pricing? It, was, it ended up being the correct pricing, but can't explain the formula. How come you know how to design this this way? Can't explain. How did you know to also do this? Can't explain. I was asked so many times, did you go for media training? Because I go on TV, I go on radio, I used to do that quite a bit. And I was like, I didn't understand that even people go for media training for this. So why were you able to do it? I can't explain. You can't explain where you got what other people see as so much audacity to do what you actually did. And when I think back and ask myself, what was a visionary move? There are, there are a couple, but there are just two that come to mind. One was we were probably in our fourth year of business and we were tendering for an assignment to do training, to be the personal finance trainer for a bank. They had had somebody else, somebody who was more experienced than I was. And I knew from the way the whole application process was approached, it was just a tick in the box. So we say we actually vetted five suppliers, but we're going to go with our usual person. And that morning, I called them and said, please, could you please put up a projector? So, yes, we filled in the document to get in the room. But once we got there, I told them, we're not here to discuss the document. The best way of showing you what we do is actually to do it to you as human beings. So, it was, let's, let me treat you as somebody who, has, who is a father, who is a mother, who needs to educate their kids and needs to save and plan for that. Let me treat you as somebody who's going to retire. Let me treat you as somebody struggling with debt. And that's exactly what we did. And... Again, as I said, ideas never stop. Ideas can be in the way the business looks, but ideas can also be in different ways to approach him. That was a visionary move. And in my system somewhere, it required more energy than just more courage than just walking up and trying to negotiate with a, with a standard uh, tender document. The other time was we had a really big client who was playing around with us, not paying and there were always this story. So I told them, and I, we could not afford it. My accountant sat next to me and was shivering as I made this phone call, but I made the phone call anyway. I said, if we don't have this commitment to pay for what you owe us for the last two months, please personally call the employees you've sent for the training, and there were like 20 of them at that point, and tell them that you cannot afford this training. And I gave them a deadline of Friday. Did I want to lose this client? No. but so, And something, I kind of knew we are not going to lose a client. I can't tell you. It was a risk, but I can't tell you why, but I knew. And I also knew if we continue with this client that way, then that is going to be a whole lifetime of this, of being taken advantage of. We are still with the client till today and our relationship is very respectful on, on both ends. So 
those are the things people who are running businesses, who are visionaries in the business, that's what they do. That's what they bring to the table. It's not a formula. It's not a process. All these are great, but to support the vision. The vision sometimes cannot be locked inside a process. Actually, in my experience, it can't be locked inside a process because it has to be out there to find the solutions that are just not obvious and the energy to pursue those solutions because it's not it's not the normal thing. So we discount it because it doesn't look like typical work. You're making some moves in your business. You've done some things. You have an idea. You're giving direction. Yeah? But it doesn't look like the typical work. It does not look like eight to five. And in fact, you're probably telling yourself you don't work hard enough because everybody else seems to be so busy. But when you actually assess what you're bringing to the table, if you had not spoken the way you spoke, if you had not made the decision you you do, if you had not called it and said, this is the next step, this business would not be where it is today. Many people would not be employed because of you. You focus your energy on getting inspiration a lot from others and you do a lot of thinking. Thinking. Figuring out how do I get out of this? How do I get into this? A lot of thinking and we underestimate thinking. In my entrepreneurship class, I like telling people, please take half an hour a day just to think. Just to think. This is not about immediate problem solving, but just think, what's the next step? How, who do I have to meet? There's a lot of thinking and there's a lot of processing of information because information is just being thrown at you left, right, and center. You probably have people who, 10,000 people telling you what you should do with your business. So sifting through the 100 things you've been told because one, one of the things you've been told or two of the things that you've been told are actually worthy of your attention is hard work. But if you don't absorb the 100, you won't get to the two. And then we've got all these other, you know, forums, social media that probably are making you feel that you're not working hard enough, etc. And just simply constantly putting the pieces together in a way a spreadsheet can't, in a way a strategic document can't. And I used to take this for granted. I used to think everybody can just do that. But no, not everybody can do that. I've met other visionaries who they seem to be able to do that, where bam, this, 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 this. Even if it takes them two months, they'll finally put them together. I've stopped for a while and some things, has, it has taken me years to put together, but eventually we'll get there where I put them together. So it's a clumsy journey for sure. You stumble along it, but somehow you actually get there. But all that requires energy. Then there's a lot of experimenting along the way. This worked, this didn't work, I could change this, etc. So you're always in the line of fire. Anything can fail at any point in time, but you're still experimenting. That's the role of a visionary. And if you do work with a visionary, please now, I hope even if, if you listen to this and you work with a visionary and you've been telling them, you've been thinking they don't work that hard because they're not in the office all the time, please check yourself. They are working hard because Think about it. Who comes to make the call about the next big, hairy, audacious move that you're going to take? Probably the visionary. Who comes to put certain pieces together that you can't actually put together? Probably the visionary. They're problem solving because there's a way they see solutions that because they are the, you know, they were the ones with the seed. They, were, they see solutions in a way that other people can't possibly see possibly see them. And then when they do have to speak and they do have to guide people, they do have to motivate people, they speak a certain way where their way of doing the message just lands with people because of their way of connecting the dots. Maybe it's their passion around them. Maybe it's their conviction around them, which can't be taught, which is not in anything that um, is tangible, which chat GPT cannot, cannot copy. That, that emotion that raw energy that comes out of a visionary is coming from somewhere. But again, it takes effort. And visionaries, if you wonder why you burn out and yet you're like, but I'm not doing that much work or I could have done more. Everything that I'm saying, and I've, I've probably only scratched the surface of this conversation. I'm liking this podcast because every episode I'm like, I need to come back to that. I need to come back to that. I need to come back to that with a guest so that we can have this conversation again. But everything you're doing requires effort, 
mental and emotional, a deep mental and emotional investment. So you require a lot to recharge. Please do yourself a, a favor and give yourself permission to recharge. So sometimes you just need to step away. The stepping away can be a day, it can be a week, it can be a month, it can be three months, sometimes it can be a year. Yeah, so you're stepping away, but also plugging into the right things because we also require some level of stimulation to keep the juices flowing, to keep the ideas flowing, to keep the inspiration flowing. So visionary, give yourself a break. You've been telling yourself, I don't work hard enough. Being visionary is a job. In fact, the reason you don't think you work hard enough is because you are visionary. Being visionary in itself is a job. And just start evaluating what are the things you actually do just because you're visionary. The way you handle certain things, you've underestimated it, but it's because you are visionary. You're bothered about certain things. Yeah? Because you understand things in a way nobody else can understand. Because the picture you see cannot yet be drawn perfectly. So it sits in your head. A lot of it sits in your head so many times. We do our best to get it out, to get it out, to get it out, to get it clearer. But a lot of it, the raw picture sits in your head. So I celebrate all of you visionaries out there. Keep doing what you are doing. Because we need you. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.